Okay, in this video, we're going to be looking at the graph of the tangent function. Before we start, make sure you're familiar with the graphs of the sine function and the cosine function, and also that you're comfortable with tan theta equals sine theta over cos theta. For more lessons on year one trigonometry, visit parkermaths.com forward slash y1 trig. So we're going to sketch the graph of y equals tan x for minus 360 degrees is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 360 degrees. And to do that, we're going to make use of the identity tan theta equals sine theta over cos theta. On the screen, we have the graph of y equals sine x, which is red, and y equals cos x, which is blue. To start our graph of tan x, we're going to plot a few points on the graph. First of all, I'd like to consider what happens when x equals zero. At x equals zero, sine x is zero, and cos x is one. So when we do tan x is sine x over cos x, we get zero over one, which is zero. We have a similar thing happening at x equals 180 degrees. Sine x is zero. This time cos x is negative one, but zero over negative one is still zero. Moving over to 360, a third time sine x is zero, cos x is one, and so that means that we get tan x equals zero. So that's three points that we know that our curve is going to go through. Next up, I'd like to think about what happens at 90 and 270. At 90, cos x equals zero. And so the calculation that we would essentially have been trying to do would be, 1 for sine x divided by 0. We can't do 1 divided by 0, it's undefined. The same thing happens at 270, we'd be doing minus 1 divided by 0. Although we can't plot those points, we can think about what happens very close to 90 and 270 either side. Suppose we're on the left hand side of 90, but we're moving towards it. So as x approaches 90, let's think about what happens to sine and cos. Sine x approaches 1. And cos x approaches zero, but let's imagine we don't actually get to zero. We just get values of cos x that are really, really small. So the calculation we'll be doing for tan x is some number that's very close to one divided by some number that is really, really small. So imagine if we were doing one divided by 0 0.0001. When we divide one by that very small number, we get a very large number. In fact, the closer we get to 90, the larger tan x will get, and it approaches infinity. And so what we can do is draw on a vertical asymptote at 90 degrees. And this asymptote is a line that the curve will approach, but it will never reach. And so let's now have a look at the shape of tan x between 0 and 90. Starting from 0, we increase until we approach infinity but we'll never actually reach that line where x equals 90. And so this is the shape of y equals tan x between 0 and 90. But what about after 90? What happens there? Let's put the curves of sine and cos back on. And this time, I'd like to think carefully about what happens to tan x as we approach 90, but from the other side. So sine x is still going to approach 1. And cos x is still going to approach zero, but with one key difference. The values just to the right of 90 degrees for cos are negative. So we'll still be doing one divided by a really small number, but that really small number will be negative. And so the answer that we get for tan x would also be negative. And so what we have is a curve that starts very close to 90 with very large values approaching infinity. And then that curve will come up towards the axis, crossing at 180 degrees. Let's draw that on. Now let's think about what happens between 180 and 270. Once we pass 180, sine and cos are both negative. But if we do a negative divided by a negative, we get a positive. And so after 180, our curve will be positive. Let's have a think about the shape. We're going to get a similar thing happening at 270 to what happened at x equals 90. As we said earlier, we're undefined at 270 because we can't divide by zero. 
This time, the value of sine x as we approach 270 will approach negative 1. And the values of cos x will approach 0. So we're going to be doing negative 1 divided by a number that's really small. But remember that number is negative. So that's going to give us a really large number again. So we're going to approach infinity again at 270. So let's add on an asymptote first of all. And then we'll take our graph from 180, 0 up to 270 approaching infinity. To the right of 270, we've got a number approaching 0 divided by a number that's approaching negative 1. Once again, we're going to be off at infinity, but this time we're doing a negative divided by a positive, so it will be negative infinity. So our curve will come from negative infinity and it will go up to 360, 0. And so that's the shape of our tan curve. Let's take off sine and cos so we can see it a bit more clearly. And what you might spot is that although sine and cos repeat every 360 degrees, we can see that tan repeats itself every 180 degrees. So we could, if we wanted, draw this graph beyond 360, repeating the same pattern. But we're supposed to be drawing this graph between minus 360 and 360. So all we need to do is complete this repeating pattern going to the left. We need asymptotes at minus 90 and minus 270. The curve will go through 0 at minus 180 and minus 360. And we'll just continue the pattern. And so that's our graph of y equals tan x between minus 360 and 360. Some key things to look out for when you're sketching this for yourself. Before you start, it's probably a good idea to mark the x-axis every 90 degrees and then put some asymptotes at plus or minus 90 and 270. Then, as your curve approaches those asymptotes, be really careful to make sure that your curve never actually touches them. If you're drawing a graph in the exam with asymptotes and your curve touches your asymptotes, it's likely to be marked incorrect.